Hey, how's it going? Today, I'm going to be showing you a showcase slash speedrun slash guide um, of how to complete the GTA 3 Toughened mod. Um, I would say as easily as possible, but some of the strategies here that are used are quite risky for the sake of, you know, trying to go as fast as possible um, in order to complete the mod in under two hours. Now, I will tell you about safer strategies that make this significantly easier as we go through, and I will also detail all the differences and all the traps that you need to look out for um, in terms of actually like what the difference is compared to the normal GTA 3 missions. Um, I'm not going to pretend I know absolutely everything about this mod, but a lot of the strategies that we developed recently have been going through the actual code and the mission scripts in order to figure out all the secrets and all the traps. So without further ado, let's get started. First of all, as we get started, if there is any uh, background noise, I do apologize. There are some, you know, building or road works or something outside, a uh, couple of drills and stuff going off. But I don't think it should be too annoying. The first obstacle here, um, the trick is to just simply go fast enough um, that you can go over kind of piece by piece, but don't go too fast to where you knock yourself off. Uh, you can always get caught on your own car pieces, and that's very annoying. Uh, make sure you dodge these cops here, because they will pull into you at the last second. They can also be very annoying. Um, but yeah, that, that fence is something that you just kind of get used to. Um, you'll notice that in the in the regular GTA 3 speedruns, you can use the, um, the top-down camera in order to despawn traffic, but that has been disabled in the toughened mod. So I will filter through cameras sometimes because sometimes it's better in terms of visibility to go closer or further away. But for the most part, I'll just be using the far away camera. I tried to uh, buffer an exit out of the vehicle there as I hit the marker, but I slightly mistimed it. That's not a strategy or anything. That's just me making minor mistakes. But uh, re-recording these segments until you get them absolutely perfect is almost impossible in Toughen. So minor mistakes like that, you just have to accept them. You'll also have to uh, enjoy the fantastic bang radio in the background. So, because you have a Banshee, which is one of the fastest cars in the game, in the game, sorry, uh, you may as well use it for the early game. It speeds it up significantly. The first major change is that Misty runs to you immediately here, so I deliberately pull over a little further away. Because if you try and pull up to her in a regular spot, she'll run under your car and you'll fail the mission. Because you'll run her over by mistake. That exit is what I was trying to do in the first marker. I actually did it correctly this time. So it's very important to grab the bat here. You're not actually going to use it, but if you don't collect it, you'll fail the mission. And uh, when you pull up to the docks, there's a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. Uh, as soon as you hit the guy with your car, it will set on fire. And if the girls that are surrounding him uh, die, then you'll also fail the mission. So the easiest way to do it is to kind of trigger him and then reverse out of the way so the girls don't get hit. And then once your car sets on fire, you can just safely abandon it. The girls are out of the way, and you can take the stallion. Everyone's nice and safe. You can do as much damage to this car as you want, uh, as long as it's before the paint spray. So as you can see, I'm just absolutely making an absolute mincemeat of this car. Uh, as long as you don't blow it up or, you know, lose access to it by flipping it or something, then it's completely fine. Um, the pain spray will fully repair it, but the, the final difference to this mission is that in regular GTA 3, even after you pain sprayed it, you could repair it, you could, sorry, you could uh, hand it in to the garage when it was damaged, but you can't do that in this mod. You will fail the mission at the end. So as soon as you go into the pain spray here, you need to make sure that you do not crash, otherwise you'll have to re pain spray it.
free concert tickets. So here the the mod developers actually threw you a bone a little bit and they made the ambulance and the two cop cars always unlocked. Uh, there's a chance that they can be locked and it's random in the original game. And when you enter a cop car you get five shotgun shells. So you want to enter both of these cop cars. Um, usually in GTA 3 uh, speedruns you would also use uh, this car for the next mission because it's very fast and it's very versatile. But uh, you want to take the ambulance here because it's the next best thing, and if you try and pick up Misty in a cop car, you'll fail the mission. I also grind against the side there to knock the door off. That's just a little speedrun strategy, it's not necessary, not necessary for the mod. Um, all it does is it just allows you to skip the uh, animation of opening the door, since there's no door to open. Hello caller? It can be sometimes risky to take fixed spawns, such as the ambulance and the cop car. As you see, I got a wanted level for doing so. That's because the alarm always goes off when you're in these, uh, when you're in these cars. So you pick up Misty here, and you immediately want to reverse out uh, the same way you came, because when you exit one of the two sides of Hepburn Heights here, um, where Misty lives, uh, a tank will spawn and will try and run you down. The, the tank cannons don't work in GTA 3, but it can still run into you, and if it does, it kills you instantly. So, we want to be heading left, so it makes sense to base it to the right, and then head left. It also just happens that the cutscene is shorter if you spawn him on the right-hand side. So, yeah, reverse out to the right-hand side, spawn him, and then just drive away to the left, and he's absolutely no threat to you. These boxes in the alleyway are completely solid, they're made out of concrete in this mod, so just be careful, make sure you don't hit them expecting them to break, because they don't. So my clip's last lunch has a number of changes. Um, a couple of them are very obvious at the start, as you can see. The game, uh, the mod forces rain upon you, which makes this uh, significantly more difficult because you slide around a lot when you're driving, um, but you just need to be more careful. You also have far less time to complete the mission. You have around, what is it, 240, 250? I forget what the mission usually gives you, but it's quite a lot longer. Uh, this means that if you do crash this Idaho at any point and you need to pay and spray it, that you might not have time, because it's a much tighter time limit. So just make sure not to crash, that's the easiest way to do it. As you see here, I'm very careful around that perennial. On this particular road, you can hug the right hand side, because it's not possible for any of the cars to turn right, since there's nowhere for them to turn right. So you can never get screwed over by them turning in front of you. The same applies to this road. There is a jump you can do from the top of Salvatore's mansion, and it is technically possible, but because of the rain and the fact that, as you can see, this place is covered in explosive barrels, I would say it's not worth doing, even in speedrunning uh, context. This mod is way too difficult to implement strats like that, that only save a little bit of time, and if you fail them, you have to restart all over again. Um, so currently, at my skill level and at the level of optimization that the mod is at, which isn't very optimized because this is insanely hard towards the end, uh, I wouldn't recommend doing the jump. Aside from that, you just need to park it back up, exactly in the place that you left it. I can't remember why I paused here, but I don't think it was a very long. I think I was just checking a setting or reading a message or something. Apologies for that. So here you just press your fire key, which for me is left mouse button, to park it. Make sure that you park it exactly in the space that it's in. And when you drive away, you'll see that it says like, hmm, nothing seems to be happening. You should get back into the car to reactivate the bomb. If you do that, you'll die, so don't. It's a trap. You can just drive away and the cutscene will play as normal. 
we've got the solution for you. Adopt a rock. Adopting a rock is the ideal solution to loneliness and even heartache when you're special someone is left you for that sexy cool boy. I thought you that stupid question about being too muscular as a boy. It's also a great way to avoid being called that cat person. portion of Bang Radio is being brought to you by Ed's chocolate-covered caffeine pills. The only calorie-laden non- Some uh, very piss-poor driving here from yours truly. So this is where the shotgun comes into play, because shotguns can destroy vehicles very fast. And Chunky Lee Chong, as soon as you get within a certain radius of him, he will immediately flee away from you. And he has significantly more health. So the easiest way to do it is to set up an insta-kill trap for him. And the way that works is as soon as you're in a vehicle in GTA 3, if the vehicle blows up, it will kill you no matter what health you're at. So what I do is I shotgun it twice and time the second shotgun shot to hit and blow the car up as soon as he's like classing as entering it and then that will kill him no matter what health he is on. So that's the easiest way to kill him with the littlest amount of effort. Van Heist is the most bullshit mission um, in the entire mod because nobody has ever figured out the solution to this without being told how to do it. The solution is that there is a random NPC behind Joey's place that you would never spot unless you knew she was there. And uh, you actually go and use her to trigger the guys to exit the car. Or the van, or security, security car. I guess it is a car. Yeah, you just kind of run her nearby, and sometimes it can be annoying to trigger. She has to stand at like a certain spot, I think. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, there you go. And then you can just drive it back. Um, if you try and do any of the regular strategies by actually damaging the security car, you'll just set it on fire as soon as you hit the top of the, um, like the damage meter. So as far as I know, and as far as anyone else knows who's looked into the code of this, it is completely impossible to complete this mission in any other way. Uh, you're welcome to look for other strategies, uh, many speedrunners have tried, many people doing the mod have tried, but yeah. Um, this is the only mission in the entire mod, I would say, that is actually impossible to figure out unless you have prior knowledge. Which is unfortunate, because obviously many people try this blind, and I don't believe anyone's figured it out. So next up is Kipriani's Chauffeur, which is a mission that I would I would recommend saving beforehand. Uh, I, I would recommend saving pretty much after every mission that you have the option to because of how inconsistent and annoying and brutal this mod can be. But uh, this is the first point where I would say that this is like a somewhat inconsistent strategy. Um, these basic missions have been a cakewalk so far. And a lot of Portland is quite simple. Um, if you know what you're doing and you follow my advice. But unfortunately the way it is with these kind of mods is that some of the strategies simply aren't consistent. GTA is too random and this is one of them. All right, well, I hope we have more than just this one listener calling in, or we have to cancel the call-ins from now on. Anyways, you are listening to Bang Radio. So here, as soon as you try and make your escape, uh, it will tell you that a coach has been invented and it's cloning triads and you need to destroy it. So the shotgun again is your best friend here. What I do is I drive away a little bit in order to um, like get these guys to all exit the bus and run into you in a line like this. And then you can run them all over because if you try and destroy the bus or the coach immediately, uh, these guys will just gun you down. And if you take too much damage on the car, it'll set on fire and you'll fail the mission. So I park it nice and far away and then shotgun it five times. Uh, technically speaking, you can just do it with four and leave it to set on fire and blow up. But um, I prefer to just get rid of it nice and easy. You don't need the shotgun ammo too much. Anymore. Also, if you get the option to, make sure to grab a pistol. 
Um, if you don't get one, that's fine, you can get one at the ammunition later, but this is the most convenient place to grab one. Also, enjoy uh, Ramstein America being significantly louder compared to the rest of the radio, because the audio balancing on Bang Radio is awful. So, taking out the laundry um, has a couple of things. Usually in um, the original, you could go to the ammunition here and you could buy an SMG and drive by these guys, but they have significantly more health, they travel significantly faster, and the Uzi is not available at ammunition in this mod until you complete this mission. So luckily, there is a secret way to complete this mission, and it involves going to Misty's place at Hepburn Heights. So once you activate this marker, all of the vans will line up in a row, and you can simply just shoot this explosive barrel and blow them all up. The reason you should have a pistol by this point is that for some odd reason, uh, you can only trigger that barrel uh, with a pistol. An SMG doesn't seem to work if you grabbed one. So yeah, uh, the pistol works. If you didn't get a pistol, you can grab one for the ammunition here before you trigger the marker. But after you complete the mission, be sure to grab two lots of Uzi, because you'll need them for the upcoming missions. In America, America. You can take a little shortcut here back to Tony's place, but it can be risky, because you end up killing a lot of pedestrians. And you can also crash like an idiot, like I do. Luckily, I get another Mafia Sentinel here. I get very lucky. Um, but yeah, the, the thing with running over a lot of pedestrians can be bad because wanted levels stay, I, th I believe they're easier to get, but don't quote me on that, and they also seem to stay for significantly longer as well. There is health up in Tony's place, just up the stairs there in case you need it, um, but you should use it sparingly. Look at that, look at, <laughs> let me get him stuck on that bit of the, the van. Um, but yeah, you should use it sparingly because they respawn uh, very slowly. The health pickups if they respawn at all I'm not actually sure if they do but I think they do uh, so the only ways to, to heal are to use those sparing health pickups which you should only use if you absolutely need to and then if you need a little boost of health you can enter the ambulance at the hospital and it will give you 20 health every time you enter a new one so here the ambulance is pretty much the same as normal the only difference is that is they have upgraded weapons some of them have SMGs and uh, they take significantly more damage. So that's why we grabbed two Uzis here. Uh, here I kind of got screwed over because a cop spawns and like sandwiches me in, which is very silly. So what I do is I shoot to alert the cop to get him to run away and then I'm able to get myself unstuck. But yeah, it's very rare that that happens. That's the first time it's ever happened to me. Usually you can just line them up like this. This guy will get stuck like an idiot, then kill this last guy and then drive out. So yeah, uh, not exactly consistent, but dealing with AI in a, and potential random cops in GTA is never really consistent. So here you'll see an example of using the ambulance. You can just get in and out and it'll give you 20 health. Nice and easy. And then just drive back. Luckily, whenever you complete most missions uh, in this game and in this mod, you'll lose your wanted level, so these two stars aren't a threat to me. So, this, casually speaking, is one of the worst missions um, in the entire mod. It's very important that you you um, you don't leave your game running too long, and if you're going to do a fresh run of this, do restart your game uh, before you do it, because otherwise there's a chance that this marker can just not spawn. Um, the only way that I've seen to make it spawn consistently is by restarting my game uh, during every attempt when I do a speedrun of this.
But the trick here is that you get given a black perennial instead of the stretch, and every single time you collect somebody, as you'll see Joey will get in here, uh, they've had a big lunch and it makes the car heavier. The way it works is as soon as you spawn in here, you should, you'll see it for about a frame, is as soon as you spawn in, the platinum from Bullion Run, as you see there, it, gl it glowed for like a second. It spawns right on top of your car and you pick it up and the platinum makes your car heavier. So every single time you get to a certain place, you get heavier and heavier until the car barely moves. And then you've got to deal with the triad van ambush and deal with the fact that you need to get up the hill while your car is extremely slow. And that makes this one of the worst missions. But there is a way that you can avoid two of the platinum pickups, which we discovered recently. And all that you do is you get out of the car in the marker and then hold W, sprint and F um, in order to sound the horn. Uh, I have my shift key as horn and sprint on foot. Um, and then as you can see, if you do that correctly, you can avoid the platinum pickups because you only pick up the platinum if you're inside the vehicle. But because you buffered yourself out of the vehicle, then uh, the platinums don't get picked up and you don't get any heavier. So this is the default state that the perennial will be in for the rest of the mission, which makes this significantly faster and significantly easier. It's still not easy, but it's significantly easier. So here, before you pick up Tony, you need to run over a pedestrian. There's a granny here with a flamethrower. If you don't run her over and kill her, she will kill Tony in the cutscene. That's another trap. But here you do the exact same thing. Buffer the exit to get out. And you will not pick up the extra set of platinum. Here is where you get ambushed by the uh, triads. So you're going to be very careful. What I do is I immediately run up the stairs to safety. And basically let the triads ram the perennial out of the platinum. If that doesn't happen and... You, you know, you need to shoot some of the triads, then that's completely fine, but most of the time you don't have to. But yeah, just run in here to make sure that you don't get run over. If they knock the perennial out of the way, perfect. If they don't, just push it. So yeah, I was just waiting for a couple of them to get out of the way here. You see, most of them are parked, so that means I can just get in and go and just run. As you see, you get shot a lot. Um, so it's good to take this alleyway here to the left, because it means that you won't deal with triads shooting you. Uh, my car is already on quite low health, so you can either take the path around to the right on the grass, or you can take the path on the left. If you take the path on the left, which is a lot faster, and you're on low health, uh, if you're, you know, your car's taking a lot of damage, you can kill that guy, because he'll do a lot of damage to you. Here, I get absolutely screwed by this van. This has never happened to me before. Classic, you know, uh, as soon as I go to showcase the mod, a bunch of things happen that have never happened before. And he spins me out. But yeah. Uh, this guy never follows you that far. He completely minged me here. But yeah. Just make sure to take as little damage as possible. You can play as safe as you like. I'm going risky because it's a speedrun. And yeah. That's one of the hardest missions out of the way. So. If you made it this far. Congrats. Be sure to save your game. So here, uh, usually you would go to Chico, who is like the drug dealer for Maria. If you go there and you enter the cutscene, uh, Chico will kill Maria and the mission will fail. So that's another trap to look out for. Instead, you just go straight to the party. So, another recently, recent discovery here, which is an absolute blessing, is that for some odd reason the developers put a really loud and obnoxious cutscene here um, when you drop off Maria, where a bunch of like FBI guys bust in and they like, you know, it's just a bunch of like SWAT um, noises played on top of each other and it's really loud and obnoxious. But it was recently discovered by Powdernet that if you press your submission key, which for me is caps lock, uh, when the cutscene plays, you can skip it. So, thank god. So you see it plays for like a frame, but I can immediately skip it. And then what I do is I reverse to bait out all of these guys that are trying to, you know, drag you out of the car and whatnot. Kill them all. And then pick up Maria. 
she decides to be a complete idiot here and goes to the wrong side, which almost screws me over. But, yeah. Just make sure that all those guys are dead, because if you try and pick up Maria and escape, they'll throw you out of the car and then they'll kill you, which is very annoying. And then the drive back is fairly simple. You've just got to deal with the police, which can be very annoying. And uh, especially the toughen police, because they are... They are turned up to 11, let's just say that. So I actually failed this mission in my initial recording, which is why you see a lot of splicey splicey here, and I magically have armor. Uh, that's because I had to load a save, because I smashed up my taxi in this little segment here. But the armor is right where I'm looking, right there. You can pick it up as soon as you start this mission, because you're waiting to pick up Kelly Bob anyway. Uh, this is what we call like an auto-scroller, which is like where you can do anything you want in the meantime. As long as you, you know, you follow the steps, you'll always be on, you know, you'll always be as optimal as possible because you're basically on a timer. So you want to grab the armor and then grab this taxi here. Taxi is very important because there is a little Easter egg in this mission. This is in the original one. This is not a tough and exclusive. Where instead of having to tail Curly Bob all the way to the, um, all, to the all the way to the docks in a taxi, you can actually grab your own taxi and pick him up. Now you pick him up outside of Luigi's club and if you're doing this in one take, which I am not, then you'll notice that your the Platinum from Salvatore is called a meeting. Uh, those Platinum pickups will still be there. You can pick them up in this taxi. Uh, you should grab them at some point uh, just to get them out of the way because otherwise they'll stay there forever. The most optimal place to pick them up is, I'll show you later on, it's during Last Request, which is the final Portland mission. So if you're planning on being as optimal as possible, then you can, you can just park to avoid them now. Just pick up Kelly Bob and then drive him to the docks and then grab them later. If you want to be safe and just get them out of the way, then you can pick them up in this taxi and then pick up Kelly Bob. It just means this drive will be a little slower. And you know, we're trying to go as fast as possible. So I wouldn't pick them up here personally, uh, but I also loaded the saves so they're not there at all. <laughs> So here, if you run over Curly Bob like in the original, you will fail the mission because it turns out he is not actually the rat in Tuffin. So instead you just drive right past him, pretend he doesn't exist, and when you drive a certain distance away, the mission will pass. So you see here, uh, I'm showing you where the health is. I'm choosing not to grab it because I'm still on a decent amount of health. And also, uh, there's a secret in this mission. Uh, it's not very well hidden because the, uh, the game specifically tells you keep your friends close and your enemies closer. And what that means is these guys have significantly more health, but if you're within a certain radiance of them, so you're keeping your enemies close to you, then they have the normal amount of health. So, I grabbed the ambulance here purely for a boost of health, and also had to have a nice tall vehicle. Because, as in the original, uh, you want to go around the back of the fish factory here and shoot the guy over the wall. Uh, it saves you having to try and get a fish van from somewhere and enter through the gate. You can just kill him from around the back. So I'm sitting here reading the Liberty Tree. And it says, in nearby Carcer City, Good day for law and order as police. So I shoot this guy in order to get him to aggro onto me and run towards me. And then you can kill him once he drops off. And you see he dies pretty much instantly. Otherwise he would take an absolute shit ton of ammo to kill. He's got fur and a tail. He gets in lots of trouble, but he's a bouncy little fellow. Because he's got springs for legs. 
Pogo the Monkey, the best new video game for the whole family. I love you, Pogo. You found. Help Pogo escape the Call all units. Stand one progress time. These next two kills are very simple. They're exactly the same as in the original. You just gotta make sure that they get nice and close. Just hop out, kill this guy as soon as you can, get back in before a big gang war starts. And then the final, I try and drive by them, but you don't seem to be as accurate. Uh, so you can just get out and kill them. Nice and easy. So I parked the, parked the ambulance there because we're going to be heading towards uh, the next segment of Blowfish, which is uh, towards the north. Here the timing is quite tight no matter what you do. Uh, as soon as you get into the Trash Master it's going to set on fire and slowly start damaging itself. So you're on a really tight timer and you can't crash otherwise you'll fail. What I do is I deliberately knock over the fence here um, because it gives you a little shortcut rather than driving all the way around. I try and also knock the fence so it's not as much in the way, because you can bounce off it and do some damage, but that's good enough. So you'll see as soon as you get in it starts damaging itself, and if you crash it will also damage it. So you're going to be very careful not to crash, and take this specific route, and you will just make it in time, but it is very tight as I said. So you can cut through here, save you going around um, the little dirt path, and then you basically just drive straight and be sure to, uh, to, yeah, dodge traffic, dodge pedestrians, just don't hit anything and you'll be fine. So you can see I, I switched to the close camera here because it's uh, kind of easier to see the trees and then I switch back later on once I've gone through the kind of tight turns. This little segment to cut through here you don't have to do it, it's just a little bit quicker but it is very tight. If you bonk either of those sides you will fail so be very careful. So here you just need to wait and they'll let you in. You can press uh, the same key that you pressed during my clips in order to activate the bomb and then park it and immediately grab one of the fish fans and drive away. As you can see I get absolutely memed here by the guys uh, when I, as soon as I get in the fish van. This guy just runs right up to me which again has never happened before and I try and get in and I get thrown out constantly and it's just yeah it's just absolute shambles and I have to kill all three of them and I lose all my armor pretty much which is yeah just really silly but that's GTA for you sometimes you can just get screwed over this is why you grab the armor because there's no reason not to it doesn't lose you any time and uh, if I hadn't I would have died so always works out in the end So here you just take the Triad Fish Fan all the way back to Salvatore, it's quite a long drive. One of the longest in Portland. But uh, you can use it to climb the hill, take a few shortcuts, and on to bomb the base. Great parking, Ben. Good job. Proud of you. So during Bomb the Base, you can take the shortcut that I was talking about during my clips, the big jump off. Uh, use the Mafia Sentinel rather than the Fish Fan. It's a lot better. One of the best cars in the game, in my opinion. And yeah, as long as you have the right speed and the right angle, you can just fling yourself off this hill. Uh, if you do somehow flip or crash, you can take the Rumpo that's parked nearby, just in a northwest of 8 Balls place. 
And as long as you have a uh, 100,000, you can start the fetch mission. You should have, because there's no reason to not have that much money. So you can just immediately start Act 2. In regular GTA 3, um, 8 ball, when you pull up into this marker, you have to snipe a bunch of guys on a boat from a vantage point. And uh, 8 ball goes in when you fire your first shot. So you have a, you have time to, you know, evaluate the situation. But in this, that doesn't happen. He just starts running in straight away. So if you're super fast, you can just kill the guys quickly enough. But uh, they do have extra health and can sometimes take two shots. So that's annoying. So the easiest way to do it is to run over 8-Ball, but slowly push him over to where he lands underneath your car. And then you can uh, shoot these guys and you have a lot more time. You don't have infinite time, so you still need to be somewhat fast. Because 8-Ball will eventually get himself un you know, from underneath the car. So what I do is I just shoot these guys the best I can. And then you can actually head onto the boat rather than using the vantage point and kill the guys. I actually forgot there was a guy to the left here. He almost killed 8-Ball, so make sure to kill him first. Then you can just make sure everyone's dead, and if you are quick enough, you can run back to the car and get in it before the cutscene starts. If not, you can just grab it afterwards, doesn't really matter. This is just slightly faster. And on to Last Request, which is the final mission of Portland. So Last Request is basically the opposite of what you expect. So in the original, um, you go and take a car, but the car is a trap, and then you take a boat with Asuka and a Maria and take it to Staunton Island. In this, it's the opposite. Uh, the boat is a trap, so you take the car instead to a different boat on the north side. So here is where you should pick up the Platinum if you haven't, because you're going to switch cars anyway. So you see I deliberately go to Luigi's place and this is where the Platinum would be, if you were being as optimal as possible. Pick it up inside the Mafia Sentinel, and then ditch the Sentinel and run and grab the Cheetah. I get, I get completely stuck here. I have no idea. I think it's on like a car part. So if you're wondering why I wasn't just taking that corner as normal, yeah, I got completely stuck on something. Classic GTA physics. But you just head to the northwest side and there is a, a dock here, toughened exclusive dock, and you take the boat to Staunton Island. And yeah, avoid the trees. Put away the guns now, boys!
So usually this mission would be on a timer. You would have to wait until Salvatore leaves the club at 4.30. Um, or whatever time you get, depending on how fast or slow you are. But that's not the case in this. Um, instead, you... As soon as you get to Luigi's place, Salvatore will come out. So it's actually technically faster than in the original to complete this in terms of speedrunning. If you need armor, you can grab it on the way. The ammunition is just on your left. And you can also grab an Uzi, sniper rifle, AK. You'll have basically infinite money towards the end, uh, the later missions. So you can grab as many things as you want here. I would recommend grabbing at least 10 grenades and some armor. The grenades will be very useful later. And uh, a sniper rifle as well, because a sniper rifle is a very good weapon at killing people without taking any damage, which you'll need to do later on for some of the harder enemies. Aside from that, just said straight to Luigi's place and massacre some guys. So this is very similar to the original speedrun strat, you just park your car in that corner, facing outwards, kill all of these guys, be careful for the shotgun dudes because they can do a lot of damage, and as soon as you kill the last guy, Salvatore will run right towards you, immediately hop in your car and run him over, mission passed. You can also stop by at the ammunition there, it's just on the right, it's on the way. Uh, technically more optimal to do so, but it's better to be safe with the shotgun guys, so I always grab armor on Sayonara Salvatore just to be safe. So all of these guys have move locations compared to the original. These guys are behind the bridge. You can use uh, this segment to either throw a grenade at them, use the AK, or just use the Uzi. It's completely up to you. But uh, if you drive around that way, it saves you going all the way into the park, and it's significantly faster. This van is, I believe, bulletproof and explosive proof, so you can't destroy it. Uh, but what you can do is you can just bonk into it, and it will cause these guys to get out, and then you can just drive by them. And here is where you will see the first instance of cars despawning in the Suffolk mod, which is very annoying. Uh, I should have, if you re enter your car here, I believe it will stay, uh, but you'll see my car will despawn because I don't re enter it, which is very annoying. Here behind the stairs, there is a guy with an M16 who will destroy you, uh, so be very careful. He's a trap. So instead, just make sure to throw a grenade behind the stairs and make sure he's dead. He never drops his guns, so don't worry about trying to farm the ammo. 
You can snipe these guys from below. Uh, this used to be done in speedruns back in the day while this mission was actually completed. But I'm very blind and I find the, diff the shots very difficult to hit. So instead, I just go up here to the casino roof and snipe them. It's very important if you can, if you're quick enough, to grab these M60s because, uh, sorry, M16s, because M16s are extremely overpowered and we'll be using them later. So as you can see, my car's completely gone. I believe re-entering it would have uh, helped. But thankfully, there was an Infernus, which is technically an upgrade, an even faster car just waiting for me. So I got very lucky there. So this mission upcoming, Paparazzi Purge, is the only mission, I believe, where we do the fully intended strats. The intended strats are very slow, but I've tried my best to find a consistent setup to kill this guy in a different way, and none of them work consistently. They are all stupidly hard. Because you have really deep fog, as you can see, which greatly limits your field of vision. And this guy has significantly more health compared to the original. So you'll see I do another spicy spice here because I go for one of the risky strats, fail it, and have to load a save again. So unfortunately, the only consistent way to beat this is it's easy but very slow, and it's to grab the police predator here, which has guns attached to it, and uh, yeah, just shoot this guy while chasing him. Bank, bank, bank. What about it? I mean, that's not really a question. Questions usually start with. But you can like tell you, you can see this takes several minutes. So. If any of you out there watch this guide and you figure out a way to consistently beat this mission in a, you know, more optimal way, please do let me know because this is one of the missions that has stumped me in terms of finding out a strategy for it. I suppose you're one of those people that says that diet soda makes you go crazy later in life. I told you before, man. Don't mock me. My taxes pay your salary, you pansy. Sir, uh, this is a commercial radio station owned by Love Media. Advertising revenue pays my salary. And on that note, it's been two full minutes since a commercial. But I'd like to say, if anyone else is stressed, might I recommend Equinox from Zaibatsu Pharmaceuticals? We'll be back after these important messages. Sell out! I used to be concerned and nervous about the future. Sometimes I'd get scared before an important event such as childbirth or family funeral. Hey, sometimes you need a little help nav- So whichever method you do, you blow him up, that's the mission passed, and then you head straight back to the docks. Oh, I used to fall unconscious for hours at a time. Now with Equinox, I never need to sleep. Equinox is new from Saibatsu Pharmaceuticals. Ask your doctor about Equinox today. Equinox may cause nausea, loss of sleep, blurred vision, leakage, kidney problems, and breathing irregularities. Do not take Equinox if you're operating any machinery, driving a car, pregnant, a child bearing age, unhappy, or have a family history of mental disorders. Equinox, softening life's harsh realities. Tonight, the TV event that will make history, Liberty City Survivor. This takes reality TV to a whole new level. We'll take 20 recently paroled guys, equip them with grenade launchers and flamethrowers, and let them hunt each other down. It's the reality show where you just might be part of the action. I was grabbing a sandwich at that. I don't know why I tried to park here. Uh, I basically tried to like spin myself around to face uh, like this, yeah, but it didn't quite work. Uh, exiting boats is very annoying in GTA 3, but there is a mechanic, as you see, where if you're near a jetty and the boat is near you and you jump into the water, it will teleport you to shore, so you can make use of that. That's a fully intended mechanic in the original game. I also knocked a door off here of my car. Um, because it will make this segment significantly easier because you'll save a lot of time and this mission is quite tight. It's my home. So this mission is pure driving. Um, the difference is that there is an extra... Uh, there are two different things. Uh, one you likely won't notice, one of them you will. The one that you will notice is that there is an, a bonus phone that you have to collect compared to normal, um, which makes this significantly tighter in terms of time limit. So after you collect this one all the way at the southern part of the map, you have to drive all the way to the furthest northern point, which is the hospital, and then drive all the way back uh, into the main part of the city. So yeah, you do have to be quick. This, uh, this timeline is quite tight.
and don't park like an idiot trying to be optimal like I did here because it will lose you a lot of time. The part that I never noticed until we looked into the code of this mission is that there is an, actually a cartel cruiser hunting you down the entire time. Even in all of my practice and all of my runs of doing this mod, I have never once seen the cartel cruiser. So I have no idea where it is, but apparently it's hunting you wherever it is, but it is absolutely zero threat to you. But if you do see it, then congrats. Bonus DLC content. I hope you like the uh, the new voiceovers because they're all replaced for some odd reason. I was told that apparently Pac did the voiceovers for this because um, he has a naturally quite deep voice and obviously with the voice changer as well. Um, but he isn't credited in the credits, I don't believe, so I'm not sure if that's true or not. Pack is the, the original creator of speedrun.com, for those who aren't aware. Which is where we have all of the official GTA rankings and leaderboards and whatnot. So, exactly in the original, you, the time limit ends and you've officially kind of passed the mission as soon as you get to that last phone. You just gotta head to the park and go into the marker to fully complete the mission. Silence the Sneak is the exception to the rule, or one of the exceptions to the rule that I mentioned earlier, where when you complete this mission, you don't lose your wanted level, but conveniently there is a pay and spray nearby. The easiest way to complete this mission is to, um, I don't know why I spin around my Banshee here, because I'm going to go and pay and spray it immediately, but you want to grab, grab the blister nearby, park it in front of the garage in front of you, because you need to throw a grenade into the window, and then kill McCaffrey somehow when he comes out of his garage but his car has a lot of health and it's also bulletproof so we can't just gun him down or you know throw one grenade at him like you would in the original so instead you line up with this little hill bit on the ground do a fully charged th grenade throw and you'll never miss and then i just launch nades into the garage from here since he's blocked uh, in this particular instance i set him on fire but then he exits his car once he's exited his car of course you can just shoot him so i just kill him in the back corner with the shotgun nice and easy but usually you'll just blow up his car and that will kill him and then you still have the wanted level so it's very important that you go and head to the pain spray which is just up here and you can get rid of those four stars and also repair your car which is very convenient
that's why I'm here at one of the Eris factories, so you can meet some of them. Excuse me, sir, do you enjoy your job here? It's fun. We get to play with knives. <laughs> I see. Is there a real sense of teamwork? My friend Joey sewed his hands together. Wow, you're li- Great parking again, Ben. So this mission isn't too different, uh, the only difference is, is that you get different weapons. There is only one rocket instead of five that you would grab on top of the shipping container which you, you would usually use in order to defend yourself. But luckily we have the M16 from earlier to destroy these cars very quickly. If you don't have the M16 there are Molotovs that you can use, both at Liberty Campus and uh, on top of the shipping container as well. You can do a cool little jump here, I almost get stuck doing it. And you'll see there is a tank here. Usually this tank is locked in the original game, so you're not supposed to be able to access it. But there is a very nice, also an M16 that you can grab there if you need it. With a, I think it only gives you like 60 bullets, but yeah. Then you can hop on top of these boxes to go and grab the single rocket that the game is nice enough to give you. But yeah, we're going to be using that tank. It is very important that you grab it after this mission, because it is vital for the mid-game. Then we just use the M16s to blow up these guys. Two guys around the corner, you can flick your camera to, to spawn them in nice and early. And then, last guy here, nice and easy. So, if you leave this area without taking the tank, it won't be there when you come back, so you need to make sure you grab it. Even if you do gain access to it in the original, it isn't explosive proof, which means that if you collide with something and explode, it will kill you depending on the angle that you hit something with. And it is also locked, as I mentioned. This tank, in Toughened, in this particular side, is it's unlocked and it's fully uh, damage proof. So, it is also important that you grab some M16 here and 20 rockets. 20 rockets might sound like a lot, but uh, trust me, I, I grabbed 15 actually, but 20 is a lot safer and you have enough money to grab 20, so I'd recommend grabbing 20. But it's doable with 15. You'll just have to be a bit more conservative and make sure you don't miss any shots. But yeah, if you're doing this in a non-speedrun setting, just trying to beat the mod and using a guide, then I would recommend buying 20. And make sure to save your game before every mission, so if you do mess up and you do die, you can just load your save without having to buy more. You will have enough money by the end in order to complete the exchange as normal. You can spin the tank turret around, as I mentioned, and you can shoot backwards, and that propels your, uh, your tank forward, which gives you a lot of speed. It allows the tank to be one of the fastest vehicles in the game, but I use it sparingly because I don't want to get a huge wanted level by killing a lot of people, because as I say, wanted levels are very annoying, and as you can see, you can easily flip the tank if you hit the wrong part of a car at the wrong angle. So, very important to kind of play safe with this, because you need this tank. This mission becomes very trivialized with a tank. If you don't use the tank, uh, you kind of have to do it the old-fashioned way, which is very annoying because you get a lot of police attention on you. But... So with the tank, you don't actually have to do any of the mission's objectives. All you need to do is just collide with the, um, the bobcat. With the, with the tank, excuse me. And if you do, the mission will instantly pass. Usually you would have to bonk into the Bobcat several times and pick up several uh, evidence packages and then torch your car, but that's not necessary. There is also a secret in this mission which isn't actually used because the tank is faster, but if you want to make use of it you can. Um, where if you enter a Landstalker, there is a fixed one in the park, where you would usually do a ride in the parks missions. Um, if you enter a Landstalker during this mission, it will remove the usual damage proofs of the Bobcat. So that means that you would just be able to shoot a rocket at it and also pass the mission instantly. But that's not faster than using the tank in the specific route that I'm doing. So if you are using the tank, then just shoot behind you to chase him as quickly as possible and just floor it after him. Make sure you don't crash and flip too much. And yeah, just collide with him and that's mission passed. Nice and easy. 
You also want to keep this tank for a drop in the ocean, which is a mission coming up in a few missions time, because there is a really difficult segment at the end of a drop in the ocean, but the tank makes it trivial. So exactly the same as during under surveillance, you want to make sure that you re-enter the tank to make sure it doesn't despawn when you get to this next mission uh, marker. So exit and then re-enter and exit again just to make sure that the tank doesn't despawn. I'm not sure if this is necessary, but it's good to play safe because if you lose your tank, you're going to lose a shit ton of time and this mod is going to be significantly more difficult. So here you want to take the tank to the safe house and store it inside the garage because uh, you want to use it for later as I mentioned, so the easiest place to store it is just inside the garage in Staunton. So here, just once you've stored the tank, you can just grab any car, doesn't matter. It's not a very uh, long drive, because they also throw you a bone in this mod by making a cartel cruiser, which you need in order to access this compound. And it is, I, f I forget to actually grab it here, but it's right behind you, just to the left. Right here, and it is always unlocked and you can always use it for this mission. It's very important that you don't hit any of these guys with your car. Because if you do, they will be they will blow you up and kill you. So instead, I just use the M16 and just nuke these guys. My aim is awful here, but uh, yeah. Just smash these guys up. And then there's two garages here. Um, I actually throw a grenade, but I meant to throw it at the left one. Because you can kill the guys through the door. The guy on the right side you should kill, but he's too far back um, in order to actually kill with the grenade. So just M16 him instead. Also, these guys are shooting at me. They don't usually shoot at me, but yeah, kill them. And then the grenade kills the two guys in here, and you can save the old oriental gentleman. I believe he's always in that garage. Uh, but if not, you can use the same rule to apply for the other two garages, which he potentially spawns in in the original. But I do believe he's always in that specific garage in Toughened. At least he has been so far for me. So yeah, just throw a grenade at the left garage to kill the guys uh, without having to deal with them because they have M16s and they do a lot of damage. And then just M16 the guy on the right side because otherwise he'll shoot the Orient Oriental Gentleman as he walks past. I would also heavily recommend saving the game before doing this next mission and saving the game with the cartel cruiser because you're going to need it for this next mission. So if you lose it, you'll have to go and get another one on the street, which can be very annoying and random. And the start of this mission, this next mission, is very annoying. You can grab health at Donald's place if you need a quick top up. Yeah, as soon as you start this mission, you're gonna instantly get five stars and you need to get to the pain spray to get rid of them. And it can be very annoying because the FBI can just completely screw you over by driving you into you, driving into you, flipping you over, hitting you, shooting you until you blow up. And ultimately it's just kind of random. It's, one, it's another one of these missions when there's only so much you can do. Uh, sometimes you can just fail and it's not your fault. But just do your best to make your way towards the marker and then just take a right and uh, head towards... down this street to the pain spray.
That was a, a huge bonk there to spin me around. That was completely intentional, I assure you. But uh, this snipe is a little tricky to learn, but once you learn it, it is by far the easiest way to complete this mission. All that you need to do is back your uh, cartel cruiser in here so Kenji spawns. Line yourself up right in the corner as far as you can go here. And then what I like to do is I aim, and if you see the pillar at the bottom of my scope, like behind the stallion, I aim just to the left of that and shoot every pixel I can of this light. So just go one pixel to the right, one pixel down, and just shoot every part of it I can. And one of them will kill Kenji, because sniper rifle bullets actually go through surfaces in this, so you can snipe him and kill him very easily through the floor. Once you think he's dead, you can get into the car, and it will tell you that Kenji is fend fending me. If you don't get that message, that means you haven't killed him. So just take a couple more shots until you get him and then you can just drive back without having to deal with any of the memes in this mission. In uh, regular GTA 3 speedruns, you would use rockets to shoot him through the floor, but uh, you can't actually do that in this. I'm not sure if he's explosive proof or if the cars are explosive proof or what, but uh, yeah. So here, you're also on a timer. You just need to get to the safe house and grab the tank. Um, as you can see, I did a little spicy here because I actually, uh, my tank got flipped and I got busted when I was doing this, so a little spicy to another segment. Just the nature of GTA. So you can use the cartel cruiser that you had from the previous mission, uh, it's up to you, doesn't really matter. All that matters is that you get to the safe house, grab the tank, take it to the docks where the boat is, and then grab the packages before the police boat gets to them. This cop uh, really tries to earn his paycheck, but I'm just gonna make him regret that decision and blow him to kingdom come. So, because I ran over the cop at the start, I actually end up getting like four stars here uh, because it just becomes a real slippery slope. This would never happen usually, this is the only time it's ever happened to me, but of course, when you're recording a segment in a showcase, this happens. So usually you wouldn't have to worry about the police. Uh, you can stop off the ammunition here, you have plenty of time. Get some armor and some more grenades, sniper rifle, anything that you need. And then you can just launch yourself off the drop here. That police car almost screws me over. Leave the tank. Leave the tank nearby and uh, make sure to re-enter it again so it doesn't despawn just to be safe. Then grab the police predator as usual because the speedboat isn't there as usual. And then yeah, just grab all six packages before the police do. You have plenty of time to do it, so no rush.
once again, abuse the, uh, the teleportation mechanic to get out of the water nice and easy without drowning. Then grab your tank. As you can see, you have five stars. You can pain spray with a car, but I'd recommend just keeping the tank, driving back to Donald Love's place, because the ending of this mission is the hardest part, and failing it at this point is very frustrating, because you'll have to do the entire thing all over again. The most annoying part, as you can see, is that the FBI cars love to just suicide into you, and if you hit them, there's a chance that you can slow down or spin out or even flip, which is very annoying. But it is absolutely essential you keep this tank, because at the end of this, uh, when you get towards the end of the mission, you hit the final marker and it springs on you a rampage. You have to destroy, I believe, 25 FBI cars in like a minute or two minutes which is usually almost impossible to do. It is very random to do just on foot. But with the tank, it is very easy because you can just drive up and down the main strip and they will just drive into you. So I try and drive the tank up here. This is absolutely not worth it. Just get out and uh, run to activate the rampage. And then as soon as you activate it, just immediately get in. If there are any cars surrounding you, like this one to my right here, just blow them up to be safe with the M16 that you get. I kill this cop to be safe as well. Then just hop in and yeah, just mow down some FBI cars. As you can see, I almost get flipped there, which is very annoying. But yeah, they all just drive into themselves, just drive back and forth. Roadblocks are perfect. That uh, spin around was completely intentional as well. But yeah, just take them out. Two, one, and as soon as you kill the last one, be sure to immediately get out of the car because you don't want these FBI guys to aggro you anymore by killing them by mistake. Uh, here, I would recommend, if you want to try and do this as fast as possible, you can you know, speed on strats, is just shoot your gun or something to get one of the FBI cars to stay around um, and use it for this next segment. Otherwise, you'll have to get uh, lucky with a spawn on the street, which can be very slow. I didn't do it in this run, but I really should have done it in hindsight. Fortunately, I get a stinger, which is... I don't know if it's faster than the FBI car, but it's pretty similar. They're all pretty fast cars. Um, but yeah, you shouldn't need to take this risk that I do. Instead, just shoot, let the FBI, like, aggro onto you, and then just kill them and drive on your way. With an FBI car in tow. So... I would heavily recommend using a sniper rifle for this mission. If you don't have one, then I would recommend getting one before you go, because these guys have M16s and their M16s do a lot of damage. One thing you'll notice in these final set of missions is that basically every single enemy has an M16, and eventually they also get 100% accuracy, so they will just melt you and basically insta-kill you if you don't know where they are or you don't know, um, you, know you don't know how to deal with them properly. So, Sniper Rifle is your best friend because it gives you a huge advantage in the fact that you can shoot them and you're not in their range so they can't insta-kill you. Also here, I'm going to be making use of the Dodo. The Dodo is something that you can technically fly in this game, but the controls are very backwards and um, the developers never intended you to actually fly it. So it is very difficult to fly, but there are alternate backups that don't use the Dodo in case you want to try and, you know. You can try and fly the Dodo if you want to get good at it. It's a lot faster in terms of speedrunning this mod, but it's not necessary and I will point out alternative strats. Uh, which are a lot easier and safer, just slower. So, I'm going to use the Dodo to fly back to the construction site here, and then fly back to Donald Love's place. You don't have to do this, you can just drive back with your FBI car or Stinger or whatever you have. It's completely up to you, but flying back is significantly faster than driving back. I'm not going to give you any sort of tutorial on how to fly the Dodo, because that is done in other, other, other videos. And um, yeah, if I would teach you all the basics, then 
I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't recommend playing this mod if you uh, if you're looking for a basic guide on general GTA 3 mechanics. So there is a bunch of dudes in the construction site. You need to get towards the lift, which is on the eastern side of the construction site. Um, usually, you would just use the nearby cartel cruiser in order to jump onto it, jump onto the little uh, trailer, which is in front of you now, and then hop over and just run towards and skip all the guys. The problem is that that cartel cruiser is a bomb, and it's set to insta-kill you no matter what health you're on if you go too close to it, even if you blow it up prematurely. So instead, I'm going to use a nifty little hitbox on the back of the dodo's wings here to jump on top of the dodo, and then jump onto this side, Throw a couple of grenades to kill some guys, because if you try and just run through with uh, only 98 health, as I'm doing, uh, you will get killed, because these guys have M16s and shotguns. And then, as soon as I've killed a couple of them, I then just jump and run like hell, and you should make it through. You can kill these guys, you can kill them one by one, it's up to you, but running through is significantly faster for speedrunning purposes. Now you can either take the Yakuza Stinger or take the Dodo back, it's completely up to you, and head back to Donald Love's place. There is one more trap at Donald Love's place that you need to be very careful about. But we will cross that bridge when we come to it. Here I believe I try and take off, but I, uh, I get a really awkward bounce here, so it doesn't allow me to take off properly. So instead I just end up doing a little flight on this next road. But usually you can fly over the park and head straight to Donald's place here. So here, just uh, behind these pillars at Donald's Love's place, there are two guys with M16s that will absolutely melt you if you're not careful. Also, be sure to re-enter the Dodo if you're using it, because otherwise it'll despawn. So, grenades are your best friend. Just throw them like this. Once they explode and they're both dead, you can see them there. Then you can run through and finish the mission. Otherwise, if you try to just run through them, you might pass the mission, because you might be able to get to the marker in time, but they're still there after you complete the mission, and they'll just insta-kill you the second you spawn in. So, it's not worth it, trust me. So, first of all, absolutely fantastic mission name coming up. It's, uh, it's really clever, you'll see it. Haha, <laughs> get it? Because like, masturbation? Bait? Master- Anyhow. So, you don't actually have to complete this mission the way I'm gonna do it. Uh, this strat is one of the hardest strats in the tough and speedrun because of the fact that it's a lot of dodo flying and then um, it's a lot of combat all at once with a lot of guys with M16s and as you see I barely make it through because of a number of factors that we'll talk about in a second but if you're doing this just casually speaking and you're not, you're not using the dodo then you can just drive and you don't even have to trigger these guys and you can just kill them one by one. You don't even have to lure them to the trap, so it's significantly easier. But if you are using the Dodo, um, and you are familiar with Dodo bait in speedruns, then you do the grass touch exactly as normal. Then you want to trigger the first, the second, and the fourth car, not the third, like you usually would in original any percent. And then you want to, from the fourth spawn, turn around, and then land at the third guy, blow him up, and then blow up the first, second, and fourth cars as they come towards you. That allows you to group them up uh, really quickly, because they will be driving towards you the entire time. And then you can kill them mostly painlessly. 
So very important that you don't uh, trigger the third guy, as you see I'm going past him here. Also make sure I'm to slow down quite a lot, because if you try and do this fast, it is uh, significantly harder, trust me. Believe it or not, the most annoying thing about this mission is for some reason they made every single uh, pedestrian aggressive towards you. So as you'll see here, uh, you try and use the M16 to blow up the cars, but you can get blocked by pedestrians that are just trying to fist fight you constantly, and it is so annoying. So I land just here, I re-enter the dodo because it can also despawn here, which is very annoying. And then just use the M16, you can use rockets, but it makes this significantly harder because if they get too close to you, you're dead. And then you just blow up the guys as they come closest towards you, there's one more guy here. I think I whiff this shot, and then this lady completely bodies me, check this. So I try and kill these guys, I keep whiffing my shots. This guy gets really close to me, I blow them up, and then this guy gets really close to me. I try and jump out the way, but she actually bo body blocks me, so I can't jump out the way of those bullets and I almost get killed. She is so annoying. In hindsight, I should have just killed her. Um, if any pedestrian runs towards you like that, just kill them, because otherwise they'll get you killed. Um, but yeah, M16 and those guys is the quickest way I know to complete this mission with the Dodo, but it is quite risky as you can see. And then you can take off on this road and head back to Espresso to Go, which is, in my opinion, the hardest mission in Tuffet. So again, the dodo isn't necessary here, it's just faster. Um, here I'm going to grab armor to be safe because I'm on very low health and there is a convenient armor spawn just around the corner here. Um, it's just in this little pipe on the northwest side of the construction site. In over 140 countries around the world. In the past, there's been some criticism about our workers. That's why I'm here at one of the Aeris factories so you can meet some of them. Uh. I can't say that I do. So here you get $10,000 for each stall. Uh, which is why I mentioned before you'll have more than enough money no matter how many guns you buy because you get like 160k for completing this mission or something ridiculous. So, and also the dodo isn't necessary as I mentioned before. You can just drive and destroy these in any order that you want. You have more than enough time if you know where you're going. But the quickest way is to fly the dodo to Catalina's place and grab a... Well, there is a fixed cheetah on this road. But you can usually get one in traffic as well, which is a bit more convenient, because it's a, a bit closer to where you land. Because this place is like a rich area, so you can easily get very good vehicles. So I believe I get a cheetah just right in front of me as I'm about to grab the fixed spawn. But if not, there is one right to the left of you as I show there at that house and it works exactly the same way. So in this there are the regular 9 stalls plus 3 extra stalls and then 3 extra extra stalls afterwards that you can only destroy after destroying the previous 12. The first bonus stall in Shoreside is um, in the gripped area which you can shoot from down there with rockets. This is what you should have been saving your rockets for because using rockets here is so much easier because of the range and the damage and everything. But we'll go through segment by segment what, make, what makes this extremely difficult, because there's a lot to this mission, so please do keep your eyes and ears open. So, the other remaining stalls in Shoreside, the other two, are in the normal locations in the original game. One of them is at the hospital, and the other one is uh, near the entrance of the subway station. I take a very deliberate route here uh, towards the airport. I don't take the road, as you can see. I take the, the grass. This is technically slower, but if you take the road and turn that corner, there is a cartel cruiser that is coming after you, 
and if he hits you, which he did on my first attempt doing this, uh, he will flip you and just completely destroy you. So instead I take this road deliberately to avoid him. So the next stall is next to the subway station, as I mentioned, you can blow it up just over the wall here. And then that's all of them in Shawside Vale, for now. And on to Staunton Island. There are six stalls in Staunton Island, five of them are in their regular locations. And then there is a bonus one in the northwest corner of the island in the stadium. I forget exactly where it is, uh, or like what it's called, but it's where a mission giver t is in, uh, in LCS, but I forget who gives you the missions, but you when you see it, you'll know what I mean. I believe the mission giver is at the docks just to the left here. Uh, in LCS, but uh, again, it's been a while since I played that game. But the stall is just here, and the rest are exactly the same as in the normal route. I believe I get a little confused when I'm driving uh, because I'm not used to doing it this way. I'm used to doing it the other way um, in regular any percent speedruns. So I believe I do confuse myself because I'm basically doing the route backwards. But uh, yeah, these ones are fairly simple. There is one just at this four-way junction to your left, in the little car park or whatever this is. And then the next one is in the park, and I believe this is where I get confused and I start like doubling back on myself because I think I've gone too far. And then I remember that it is at the park, which is just here. And uh, you can either stand on this planter or just jump on top of your car in order to destroy it. It's quite a tricky shot to hit. If you're not comfortable with hitting that shot, then you can just drive into the park, but obviously that's slower. The next one is on your right, coming up here. Next one just up here on your right again where the van was on the surveillance. And the final one is just in this little southern segment here. So, three more to go, they're all in Portland, and Portland is what makes this uh, mission significantly harder. So, as you might know from the original game, when you're in Portland at this point in the game, uh, the Triads and the Mafia are very aggressive towards you. If they see you, they will just shoot on sight. And in this mod, um, I believe the guys in the stalls have M16s, and there are shotgun Mafia guys all around St. Mark's, where two of the stalls are. And it is very much possible to get hit by a few shotguns and insta-killed in this segment. So it is very important that whenever you're in St. Mark's, Instead of hitting the road, I would highly recommend driving on the pavement so you run over any potential Mafia guys that might shoot at you. You can also swap your vehicle here because you can tank a shotgun blast if your vehicle is on high health. But for example, if I get hit by a shotgun here, I'm instantly dead because I've taken quite a significant amount of damage. And I also get completely stuck here again, which is a big meme. I don't know how this happened so many times in this recording where you just get completely stuck and you can't move in the weirdest places. There we go. Good job, man. So, uh, the two stalls are in the regular locations. The bonus one here is right in the middle of St. Mark's. And as you can see, I get nailed by a shotgun guy. Thankfully, he shoots me and, uh, and not my car. So, just deal with those, shoot the rocket, and get the hell out of there as quickly as you can.
So as you can see here, I hug the pavement and I'm making sure to run over everyone I see to make sure that I don't get insta-killed. Destroy this stall and then immediately start heading south. I actually drive north here, but this is the wrong way. Uh, as you can see, I start heading south. I've got a Banshee because I grabbed it at the showroom. Uh, because this is another the spicy spicy. You can keep the cheetah, it's up to you, or you can switch to the Banshee to be safe. It's in the car showroom to the north point of Harwood. Uh, I'm playing safe for the sake of the showcase, but if I were doing a speedrun, I would stick to the, uh, I would stick to the cheetah for the sake of it being fast. But either way, just make sure you head straight south and follow this path instead of heading north after that last stall, because you don't want to be in set marks any longer than you have to. So here you're expected to go back to the, um, the construction site and find the location of three more stalls, but they already spawn, and if you know where they are, you can just go straight to them. It's very important that you shoot them from where I'm shooting them as well, because in that particular scenario, there is a guy that is hidden around the corner with an M16 who will kill you instantly if you try and actually go towards the stall. So it's very important that you kill them from a distance. So there is one more bonus stall on each island. That's a Portland one dealt with. The one in Staunton is just outside the stadium, and the one in Shoreside is in the location where you would usually go in during bait. Uh, these stalls are actually originally in the game, uh, like the original game, but they were actually commented out and not used, so this mod just reinstates their locations. Fun fact for you. I should have taken the left road here. Oh, I actually do take the left road. Good job, then. I believe in a previous attempt I took the right road. Uh, and I was mad at myself. And then I immediately missed my turn, so I'm mad at myself anyway. Good job, Ben. I did want to avoid this cop if necessary, so I can avoid the police, but... Then I parked right in his way, so I just said, screw it. Let's just go. So that's two out of three, and the final one, as these cops absolutely destroy me, is just towards Shawside Vale, and in the far northwest corner of the map. And the same principle as before, make sure to shoot it from a distance because otherwise you will get gunned down by a guy with the M16 behind that blue shipping container. And here I'm going to go ahead and get a dodo. Again, the dodo is not necessary, as it never is. You can just take a car for this next mission, but the dodo is faster, so I'm going to take it.
we taking it to the monument? So this mission is also on a timer. You have like two minutes of leeway to do whatever you want. So you can heal, you can grab armor at the construction site, you can grab health at Donald's place, you can grab rockets at Phil's place. All of it is completely up to you. You have plenty of time to do all of that if you so need it. Uh, you do need one rocket for this segment, um, and I would recommend a sniper rifle as well, or an M16, whichever one works for you. Um, the rocket you can actually pick up during the mission, uh, but I'd recommend having one just in case you don't grab it. But yeah, you just need to head to the airport where the plane is going to land, and simply put, blow it up uh, before the timer runs out, and then grab all the spank and fly back or drive back. But in reality, it's not that uh, it's not that easy. It never is in Tuffin. Once you blow up the plane, you're going to get six stars, which means the army is going to come after you. So you have a couple of options. Uh, you can, if you're driving, I would recommend uh, driving to the Shoreside Vale Pain Spray. If you're using the Dodo, which I would highly recommend. You can simply crash land into the construction site and uh, skip dealing with the army and, excuse me, dealing with two potential issues which I will talk about later on. That guy right there has the rocket if you so need it. Um, I play very safe here just because I have a lot of time and make sure to blow these guys up with the M16. Just to make sure that they can't bite me in the ass later on. And the same goes with these guys here. Some great aim once again by yours truly. I'm one pixel off constantly and I can't quite move my mouse that one pixel to kill them. Get rid of the AK because I don't need it and it's easier inventory management the last weapons you have. And then yeah, just wait for the plane to arrive. You can park your dodo in a place where you're gonna... Or grab one if you don't already have one. Grab a new one if your current one's damaged. Anything you want to do, you just need to wait until around 10 seconds on the timer. So when the plane arrives, just make sure to shoot it and have it blow up before you uh, before it gets to the end. Because as the timer hits zero, you will just uh, fail the mission. And then watch out for the double explosion. For some odd reason, this plane always explodes twice. Grab all the spank and either drive or fly back. There is one extra trap in this mission that I didn't mention. And it is the fact that there are two guys at the construction site with M16s, they're well hidden, and they have 100% accuracy, so they will instantly kill you if you go within their range. One of them is behind the little trailer that we jumped on top of during Grand Theft Era, where the, the cartel cruiser bomb was. We won't be dealing with him because we're going to run on the back, but we will be dealing with the other one who is up in a shipping container, uh, high up in the sky and you'll see him when I get there. Uh, this landing that I do is admittedly very risky. I almost mess it up. But you just need to land in the construction site. You can also crash land in the pain spray and pain spray the nearby parked blister. It's completely up to you. This is the fastest, but admittedly the most risky way. But yeah, as you'll see, I just about get over this fence here. This is all you need to do is just make sure you land in this segment so the tanks can't kill you. And then... If you want to keep the dodo, which you, I would recommend, because it's very fast to keep the dodo for this next segment, you can hop out and then use your sniper rifle to kill this guy who is up on the shipping container. You can see him just up there in the corner, and you can shoot his head off. He is now dead, and is of no threat to you anymore. 
and then you can just run through the construction site to finish the mission and grab the dodo again afterwards. You can hear the other guy, but he's on the other side of the wall, so he can't attack you. And yeah, that is admittedly a very risky, but very quick way to finish this mission. And now we are on to the final mission, which is um, conceptually by far the most broken and bullshit mission. Because it's the exchange, but everyone who has an M16 has 100% accuracy and will insta-kill you. But it was recently discovered that there is a way to make this significantly easier. Not easy, but easier. And I will show you that very soon. But yeah, just drive or fly to Catalina's. It's completely clear. The Dodo is much faster. I would highly recommend having as much health as possible here. Ideally 200, because you will take a lot of damage. In the early segment... So I would recommend topping up your health, topping up your armor, and then making a save at Shoreside Vale safe house so you can retry this with armor as many times as you'd like. So you don't need the dodo anymore, so you can flip it, you can crash land it, blow it up, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then start the exchange. You need $500,000 to start this mission, and all of your weapons are immediately stripped from you. Grab the pistol and immediately run behind you. As you can see, I get absolutely nuked immediately. And this cartel cruiser is the key to victory. This cartel cruiser is completely bulletproof. So you can use it to tank all of the hits. Uh, this will never blow up. Just make sure you don't get thrown out. If you want to be extra risky, you can go there and grab an M16. This isn't necessary. And as you can see, I take quite a lot of damage doing it. But it will speed up uh, this next segment because M16s are very broken. And there is one other weapon that we're going to grab, which is going to be the sniper rifle, because again, the sniper rifle is very useful, because it allows you to uh, outrange your enemies. We're just going to quickly cut through here. Quickest way to the dam is just through these little gardens. A somewhat risky jump. Make sure you don't do this too fast or too slow. Uh, too fast and you'll go into the ocean. Too slow and you'll flip. It's all about getting the right speed. And then smash away through these guys. You can also run over these guys for M16 ammo should you want it. And then make sure to grab the sniper rifle here. It has five bullets. These are very useful, so make sure to use them. And then make sure to drive through the dam. Do not get out of your car. Just run over as many people as you can. These first couple of guys don't matter because they're not going to attack you later on. So just drive through and trigger the cutscene, and then run over as many of the foot soldiers as you can. So there's one guy here. There's, I believe, three guys behind the, um, the other flatbed, and there is one guy behind you. So I killed a guy behind me. This guy in the barracks, or whatever this is, can be very annoying. Run over this guy, run over these two guys. I bonked the guy with the flamethrower, I think, twice, but I don't actually end up killing him. Come back, hit this dude. And then run over the flamethrower guy. I think I, I, I bonk him again here. And don't kill him. But you do want to kill him because flamethrowers will kill me at this health. Oh no, I do kill him there. Okay, perfect. And then you want to park just in this little corner. I, uh, I f almost flipped the car here, which is very annoying. And then you want to snipe this guy up on this watchtower because otherwise he'll kill you as you're going up the stairs. He's just on the right there. One snipe, and then you want to get just on the edge of these stairs. I almost get killed there, as you can see. I get very lucky because this I parked the car in the worst place. But yeah, you can shoot him through the stairs. This sets on fire, so I'm very careful to get away. Then I hop on top of it in order to get onto the stairs. But yeah, usually you would not have to deal with this. You can just park in the corner and you'll be fine, but I just happen to flip. Okay, there are two guys defending Maria. You can use the sniper rifle to kill them. Just edge your way up just until you can see them and then snipe them because they will instantly kill you if you're not careful. And then snipe this guy just on his arm. You can just see it poking out. Grab the rockets on your right hand side. Well, I say rockets. There's only one. Grab Maria and then wait and shoot down the helicopter. Once you shoot down the helicopter and the cutscene plays, then that is GG. But make sure to don't, don't walk too far forward because there is a guy waiting for you around that pillar just on your left. So there is another trap there, so make sure that you shoot it from the western side of the rooftop. And as soon as you see the cutscene, 
That is GG. Congratulations on completing the Toughened mod. You are rewarded with this amazing duet of Time of My Life. So, yeah. Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope this helped. I hope some of the strategies you found interesting. Um, toughened mod speedruns are very fun to do when they go well and very not fun to do otherwise. But yeah, I will see you next time and I will let this, uh, this awesome duet play out. Thanks for watching. And yeah, see you next time. Goodbye. So long, now I finally find someone to stand by me. We saw the writing on the wall as we felt this magical fantasy. Now, now with passion in our eyes, eyes there's, there's no, no way we could disguise secretly. So we take each other's hand Cause we seem to understand The urgency Just remember You're the one thing I can't get enough of So I'll tell you something This, this could, could be love, love Because Hey, baby. With my body and the soul, I want you more than you'll ever know. So, well, just let it go. Don't be afraid to lose control. Yes, I know what's on your mind when you say, Stay with me tonight. Stay with me. And remember, you're the one thing I can't get enough of. So I'll tell you something. This, this could, could be, be love, love because, because I've had the time, time of my life. Never felt this way before. before. Yes, I swear, it's, it's the, the truth. truth, and I owe it all to you, cause I had the time of my life, and I've searched through every open door, searched everywhere, for the truth, and I owe it all to you. It's the truth, and I owe it all to you. I've had the time of my life. No, I never felt this way before. Yes, I swear, it's the truth, and I owe it all to you. Cause I've had the time of my life. Through every open door 